Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective. And today we have another X1 Carbon. And this is a special one because we see the X1 branding fully flushed out, probably for the first time with this iconic X1 logo that would be a staple in all of their future product lineups. So, you know what we gotta do now. So before we get too far into things, I think it's only fair that we take a little bit of time to compare this against its predecessor, the fifth generation X1 Carbon, and some of the subtle differences that we see between them. Many of you will recognize this fifth gen X1 Carbon from a video that I did over here, thanks to Waukegan Computers for providing this one. But let's go ahead and take a look at some of the design changes because they're pretty significant and you can see some of them already. First things first, on the Gen 6, we have this darker metallic uh, badge uh, that we would see on the X1 Gen 6. We also see, of course, the X1 badging here. And this really kind of distinguishes it as kind of almost its own brand and lineup. Interestingly enough, the faded Lenovo logo that we see in this corner right here gets moved to another location. If we take a look at the bottoms, they're pretty much identical. You'll notice that this one doesn't have any docking sections. This one does. We see that there is no uh, Lenovo badging, but there is Lenovo badging on the Gen 6 located on the bottom. And then a lot of the other pieces are going to look pretty darn familiar. Now, if we flip them over and take a look on the inside, there are a few subtle differences. So at the very top here, you will notice that the Think Shutter is now included on the Gen 6, which is an amazing inclusion to have. The hinges are colored black as opposed to this space gray material. The Lenovo logo is a bit more, it's subdued and also more pronounced because it's got this little cutout badge here. And then of course the X1 Carbon is this darker uh, kind of more contrast color versus the lighter gray that is the same color as the Lenovo badging over here. But in terms of the keyboard and the trackpad and the location of the fingerprint sensor, those are pretty much all the same. The fingerprint sensor on this model is ever so slightly smaller than the Gen 5. But that's more or less the fundamental differences in terms of their cosmetics. But because they are there, and I thought it would be good to point them out, especially this darker color badging that we would see on the X1 series pretty much moving forward from this point onward. With that being said, we're going to say goodbye to the Gen 5. And if you haven't seen that video, make sure you're clicking over here. And let's dive a bit more into the details on the Gen 6. So the Gen 6 was released in February of 2018, and it was available in either this black color, and it was also available in silver. It had a new series of uh, CPUs, as well as the new branding that we went over just previously. In terms of screen options, we are looking at a 1920 by 1080 LED panel, 300 nit, 700 to 1 contrast ratio, and that was the only one that had the touch option. There was a WQHD version, which was a 2560 by 1440 display, and that came in two variants, a standard variant and then a Dolby Vision 500 nit 1500 to 1 contrast ratio display. So as you can imagine, that would probably draw a fair bit of power. Your CPU choices were primarily 8th generation Intel. There was one 7th generation i5, the 7300U. So depending on what CPU you got, would directly impact the graphics card and the RAM speed. So the Intel HD620 would be for the 7th generation Intel, and the UHD620 for the 8th generation Intel CPUs. RAM is soldered onto these just like the CPU at either 8 or 16 gigabytes of low power DDR3 RAM. 
if you were running the seventh generation Intel, that would be at an 1866 megahertz. And if it, you're running the eighth generation, that's 2133 megahertz. SSDs in these are an M.2 NVMe SSD. And if the WAN slot is unoccupied, a 2242 single-sided drive can be substituted in there. So theoretically, on the Gen 6, you can have up to two SSDs if you can source the right parts. Speaking of which, Bluetooth 4.1 up to 5.0 was capable on these machines, and obviously WAN cards were available for them as well. Options also included a 720p web camera with ink shutter, which was standard, and then of course a Windows Hello infrared camera array was also available. NFC options were available. I believe thing fingerprint readers were actually standard. I didn't see it with optional listed beside it, but I could also very easily see it being an option as well. And all of this is being driven by a rather sizable 57 watt hour battery. So let's do a quick tour of the ports before we dive into the machine itself. So on the left hand side here, we have the standard X1 carbon port selection, if you will. We do have a USB 3.1 Gen 2 Thunderbolt 3 combo port. Same things going on here with the proprietary network port, a full size USB-A, and that of course is 3.1 Gen 1, and then HDMI 1.4B. Along the back, we do have an eject tray here for both a micro SD card as well as a SIM if uh, equipped. So your SIM would go on this tray. And then if you look on the inside there, there's a dual slot for you to insert a micro SD card, which is another way to theoretically expand the storage. So up to three different storage types if you want to be generous and include that as well. And then on the right hand side, we have the Kensington lock slot, another USB 3.1 Gen 1 full size USB A port, the exhaust, and then a headphone microphone combo jack. So once again, even an X1 carbon of this era is proving that it is not a slouch on ports. And the beauty is of course, is that you are running Windows 11, if you so choose, on a machine with an eighth generation CPU. So let's grab the only tool that we need to get on the inside of this, a Phillips screwdriver. And with the machine turned over, we have five standard Phillips screws that need to be removed for us to gain admittance to the guts of this machine. And it is worth pointing out while we're down here that the yeah, reset pin hole is located just beside the micro SD card slash uh, SIM card slot. So with all those screws out of the way, it's a simple matter of just reaching one's fingernail in and pop the cover. And there we go, we have the insides of this machine. So let's grab our trusty stand and put this up on full display. And there's actually a fair bit of good news. Now, as I mentioned earlier, our RAM is unfortunately soldered on. We have a large 57 watt hour battery staring at us, which is beautiful to see. A nice sizable uh, heat sink solution here. And then of course, moving over here, this is where things get a little compact. We do have our 2280 NVMe SSD. This one is a 256 gigabyte model. We do have a socketed Wi-Fi card. So unlike the X390, which was released a year prior to this, that component remains modular. And then we also have the slot, which would normally be for our WAN card. And as I mentioned earlier, according to the internet, which is sometimes not reliable, but in this case, I believe it is, we do have the ability to put in a single sided 2242 uh, M.2 drive. Now it has to be single-sided because the clearance is not high enough to essentially allow for chips on both sides. So it does need to be of the correct size for it to fit. So because of the mild increase in upgradability, the larger battery, and just the overall build quality, if I was choosing between say an X1 Carbon Gen 6 and the X390, the X1 Carbon Gen 6 is going to easily pull ahead and win, um, win the purchase, I would say. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and put all of this back together and see what we get for some boot times. 
with everything back together, let's go ahead and crack this open and see how fast this is going to go. Well, what can we say? That is some pretty stellar performance. No questions about that. So this example is running an Intel i5-8250U and eight gigs of RAM, and is your standard 1920 by 1080 display. And that's one of the nice things is that even the base display on this um, is rather decent. And even at a modest i5 with eight gigs of RAM, this thing is booting into Windows 11 at a, at a very speedy rate thanks to that NVMe SSD. So overall, if you're looking for an X1 Carbon that's going to be Windows 11 compliant and give you a lot of computing power for years to come, then the X1 Carbon Gen 6 is where you would want to begin your search. Prices on these currently are ranging around 500 Canadian dollars and up or around 450 plus US dollars. You've got Thunderbolt 3, you've got the Think shutter, you have kind of the newer design aesthetics, you have the ability to put in that second SSD. All your display options are gonna be fantastic. Stay away from the i5, uh, seventh gen CPU, and where possible, you wanna be grabbing that 16 gigabytes of RAM, because of course that is soldered on and cannot be upgraded later. Rare models are gonna include that infrared camera setup up at the top for Windows Hello but the fingerprint login is also going to be very speedy and meet your needs as well. At any rate, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed this video. This is a fantastic piece of kit and I'm really glad I was able to bring it to you and also compare it against the Gen 5. If you do have any questions or stories about working with the Gen 6 X1 Carbon, I'd love to hear about them in the comment section down below. And as always, uh, if you enjoyed this content and be notified when I release more, please do the big four. Please like the video, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. The next time I feature a new entry in the X1 lineup, you'll be the first to know about it. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.